What's up, guys? We are here at the final cutscene of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I just had to make a video about all my theories of what is going on with this cutscene. What's brilliant about the whole end of this game, especially the last eight hours, is there's so much information thrown at you, different scenes throughout the ending of this game, that it allows the player to really second guess themselves and go, wait, do we just take this at face value? Are we supposed to theorize about what's going on? What is happening? It's really brilliant that Square Enix figured out a way to do Aerith's death again, but still leave the player with a sense of confusion and bewilderment, which is a lot different than the original. The original game is simply just tragic. It's bleak. It's very tragic. This is different. It's not really bleak. It's very confusing, but in a not in a negative way as far as storytelling. So that's why I want to. I, I just had to make a video talking about every possible thing that I see. And going right out of the bat, we have Cloud sitting here on the hill, looking at the Earth's clear materia. And first thing, I don't know if this means anything. It's a cloudy day. Interesting. And Sephiroth earlier said, you can't see the truth with such clouded eyes. I don't know if that's intentional, but it's really interesting of how much of a cloudy day this is. First thing I noticed. Also, I don't know if we're going really deep in here. She, he is sitting near to a lot of yellow flowers, and there's a part that Earth says, follow the yellow flowers. So there is possibly some symbolism there. But here's the first really interesting shot. We got the party. And first of all, just as far as scene direction, this is such a good shot in and of itself. Just in and of itself, looking at this just by the direction, this is such a great cutscene. It's an amazing cutscene. It's an amazing written, directed cutscene. And but but looking at cloud, we have cloud transfixed on this clear material. So I have thoughts on this because the, just the way he's looking at the material, and we have the party fixing up the bronco in the background. I love Sid here singing the Final Fantasy theme. It's so good. Also, good just good shots, just good cinematography here. So look, the way he's looking at this material is just really interesting. I caught this, because uh, I've watched this cutscene a lot of times. I, I feel as if knowing later on in the scene where he sees the split in reality that he's in denial of, I feel like he sees a full material. This is an empty material, so it's empty right now. He has the empty Earth holy materia. I feel that in his head, either he's seeing another timeline, he's seeing tr a true reality. Either way, I feel that in his mind, this material is full. And there's another image later that sort of is symbolic to that. Because as soon as he, and then, so he's looking at this empty materia and that he feels is full. He's looking over to the party, and just as he's seeing Aerith in this empty materia, he sees Aerith with the party. Nice catch. So, what Aerith actually do anyway? This is a really good, good shot. The dust to know that this is not a Aerith that's actually there, whether in spirit or in Cloud's mind. And with that, we are cleared for takeoff. <laughs> Yay! Her emotes is funny. It's almost funny. It's almost like an idyllic version of Aerith. Whether whether this is a spirit Aerith or whether this is a sort of. Cloud's mind is cracking under Genova and also under seeing possibly multiple realities. It's very idyllic, Aerith. 
party is wrecked. It's not fair. And Cloud is still looking in this direction also. It was a really sad shot. Now this in and of itself would obviously indicate that this is Aerith through possibly the live stream um, consoling Red 13 since they do have a connection with each other. The counter argument to this that has been said is that earlier in the Temple of the Ancients, Red 13's flashback traumatic flashback showed how he was experimented with by Hojo. So the only two characters that have Genova cells, possibly Red 13 might actually have them, and then Cloud. And also, one thing I thought about is that the person who actually has connection to the live stream at this point is Tifa. So it's really interesting, I feel, that Tifa, who has a direct connection, because she literally went into the live stream earlier into the game, she cannot sense Aerith at all. So that's the counter argument to the argument that this is Spirit Aerith. But I think this in and of itself is so ambiguous. But I feel it's a 60% leaning towards Spirit Aerith in this particular shot. But... It's really interesting how the counter argument describing Red 13 and Hojo is makes this very interesting. Cuz it's interesting I'm consoling the party and then it's like she's looking at Cloud and like look Cloud. I'm here. And then this is the shot he looks at the materia and she disappears. So the question is, if he wasn't looking over there, would Aerith had contacted Red 13 at that moment? Because if she's omnipresent, she's there in spirit, regardless of where Cloud is looking, obviously. So that is very interesting. Another crazy theory is that... Well, this also goes along with the Genova thing, is that he has become getting the power of Genova to generate uh, physical versions of, of people. So we have the clear materia. So visually, we see Cloud's head inside the clear materia. I feel like... If this is all in his head, it's very symbolic to show that, oh, this is an empty material, but he's putting himself, he's inserting himself into this material. And he sees that this is full, but in reality, he's just putting his mind into it. And so I feel that if this is all in his head at this point with Aerith, it makes sense. This shot makes 100% sense because it's all in his head. So he's inserting himself into the materia, but he thinks he's seeing Aerith. And then, what is this? Oh, snap. Oh, I have the black materia. The hell? This is, I was watching a Maximilian video about this. It's interesting how there's a red uh, glint in his eye, which... And later in this scene, Aerith has the same glint in her eye, which is an interesting. It's a reach, but it's interesting. This is great. The reunion. Yeah, he's he's losing it. So it's like we can. He's possibly seeing multiple timelines. He's possibly going insane. Or it's both. But in the next shot coming up, he's obviously able to see multiple realities. So this is why I love this cutscene. Because it's, it is genuinely ambiguous. If what happened before this scene 
was more clear cut. I think you could take this scene as, at face value to know like, well, obviously that's spirit Aerith. It's obvious, but it's really interesting how they are. I don't know if they're just messing with the player to see like, okay, how can we just do this scene, but have players just get a sense of confusion on what's actually happening. And I do feel that it is intentional. They're trying to put the player in the perspective of Cloud because every s scene is pretty much in Cloud's perspective. And since his mind is breaking, they wanted the player to feel the same way. Yeah, one sec. Interesting how this is like clarity. Cloud has clarity on what to do. There's, no, there's less clouds. He's all about the reunion. Possible stretch. I don't know if the clouds mean anything. They look beautiful. Very interesting. This is really interesting. Coming up. Also, really good shot. This, this is like one of the most amazing looking cutscenes. In a video game. But really interesting coming up here. He is in full belief that what he was seeing before is... Truly Aerith. But this coming up, he is also in denial of things that he is seeing at the same token. So he is in full belief that Aerith exists. You have to promise not to look up. But he's in total denial of this. Don't look up. Well, now I gotta look. Fine, but don't let it get to you. Don't let what get to me? It's not real. Just an illusion. It's such a creepy line of dialogue. I love Let's it. That it's such a creepy line of dialogue. I absolutely love this. It just shows that Cloud is really going to do whatever Sephiroth wants him to do, I feel. It's just, he's losing it. This is so much cooler than the original game. Now, in the original game, he was he was totally losing it in the Northern Crater, in the flashbacks, and and what he was telling Tifa, like, "Oh no, it's no Tifa, that didn't go down like that." And it's like that was really cool. But this is like we're starting early, way earlier in the game of him totally losing his marbles, and it's it's great. This is me from the future. I thought about another thing. I wonder if this line of dialogue that Cloud is saying is the developer giving a meta commentary to the player to say what Cloud is saying right here. It's not real. Just an illusion. Is that meta commentary of everything you're seeing up to this point is not real, it's just an illusion. Or is it, since this is Psycho Cloud, him saying this is telling the player, don't believe anything that Psycho Cloud is saying. So it's almost like a meta commentary to say like, oh yeah, you, you guys see the terror. And he says it's not an illusion. Thus, this is our meta commentary to tell you guys that what you're seeing is real. Because there's a lot of meta commentary in this game through characters' lines of dialogue that the developers are writing. It's in the script. A lot of characters say meta dialogue all the time throughout the game. So it's interesting how he says it's all an illusion, where you're before this, it's sort of like Aerith is popping in and out. It's all illusion. So I wonder if this is meta commentary or if this should be more taken at face value given that Cloud is going insane. So interesting thing I just thought of. Sephiroth. He's hiding up north. North? Trust me, he is. Soldier's intuition. Oh yeah? Better hope you're right. <laughs> you he's sassy. Man, Bear and Tifa are like, we are screwed. We are so screwed. I, find I love what they're setting up here. Just remember, we got everything riding on this. And that's a load you'd best be ready to carry. Carry the weight. 
Barrett carried the weight. Cloud, you gotta carry the weight too. Come on, man. No heavy loads. No heavy loads. We got weight. Cloud's like, I got this. Don't worry about me. I can handle it. It's like, dude, you're you're losing it. Tifa is not. She's just regret in her face. So much regret. All right, next shot here is also very interesting. I picked this up maybe the third, second or third time I watched this. Take care. So that line of dialogue that was spoken, Aerith is not visible. Here's Cloud turning around. Now, Aerith is not in this shot, which I feel... There's two different ways you can look at this. Maybe she's off screen to the right. Possibly. But I feel like the timing of this is just so... It ad just adds to the confusion. Because as soon as she, he starts talking, he's basically talking to nobody. He's turning his head, saying the line of dialogue that's going to so like, for a split second. And in the shot, there's no one here. You're going to be okay. Again. And then here's the shot of her walking from off screen to the, but she's really close to him. So either it's like, oh, she was just off screen. But I kind of feel like the way this is directed, it's intentional to show that she's not on the screen when he starts the, this dialogue. What, whatever that means to insinuate, to either further insinuate that only Cloud can see Spirit Aerith or that this is just him going insane because he's had a previous line of dialogue that is very psychotic. You gonna be okay getting back? And one thing that was pointed out is that all most of these lines of dialogue are references to earlier parts of the game. So it's either a cutesy banter between the two of them and their relationship at this point, or that he's just only able to speak to Aerith with the memories that he had of her as well. And if I said I wasn't? <laughs> yeah, this is calling back to remake of him going to Sector 7 and then her going home. It's like, well, who's going to take you home? Don't worry. It's like a second home. Um, this second home line was, I believe, spoken in remake in the Shinra building where she was describing her living in Hojo's lab. Her saying it was like a home. So that could be... If this if this is the theory that this is all in his memories, that's the line of dialogue that it came from. I guess. But what if what if something happens? <sighs> then I'll send up smoke. And that's referencing what Sid earlier. Uh, this this was kind of I don't know if this is true or not. But this this shot is a little, like a little bizarre looking. I don't know, and and I was like, why does this look bizarre? And I don't know if this is intentional or not, or this is just this is reaching. But it looks as if Cloud isn't even looking at her. Looks like Cloud is like looking next to her. It doesn't look like like he's he's almost looking at the camera. It does. It, I feel like he would be more to the left, looking at Aerith in the shot. It's it's just interesting how his eyes are almost like glazed, like he's just talking to nothing. He, his face looks like he's talking to nothing. Like it's a really good looking cutscene. It it almost looks that. So that may be reaching. Maybe they didn't animate his eyes to like look. But it it, it kind of looks like he's not really looking at Aerith in the shot, which is interesting. It it kind of does, but it, it it's like it, maybe it's yeah. That's one thing I noticed. It's it just look. It's just like a weird shot in his face. In his line of dialogue is so vanilla. I'll keep an eye out. 
could be reaching. I'll put everything I've got into my prayers. I'll stop the meteor. I'll stop the meteor. I'll do it for you. And I'll leave the rest to you. Good luck. Okay, guys, it's me from the future again. I'm literally editing my video. And I just noticed something else. This is how crazy this cutscene is. This game is insane. I noticed this thing, and it's a total contradiction. And I, so I don't know if this is, with the shot coming up, I'll, I'll say what it is, but I don't know if this is intentional, if this was an oversight, but it's, it's really crazy. Okay, look at this. Yeah, I, wonder, I wonder if you guys, guys noticed what I'll see by not even saying it. I'm just going to play it. And look at Aerith and notice if there's something contradicting a thing that happened earlier in the scene. Okay, let's watch it. Pay attention to Aerith here. I'll put everything I've Don't listen to the dialogue, just look at her. I'll stop the meteor. Does any of you guys know? Can any of you guys guess? Earlier, when Aerith was with the party in the ship while they're fixing the ship, there was that dust cloud that blew up and she was unaffected by that. But in this shot, when the airship starts, all of her clothes and her hair are blowing in the wind. So it completely contradicts earlier, the shots earlier of Aerith. Now it could be a total reach and it's just you know maybe it would be too obvious if her if you know visually it would probably look really weird if nothing was blowing it would just like look off so maybe this is just a sort of a creative way to make this a more visually appealing scene maybe it's not supposed to be contradictory maybe it's just you know it's just one of those you know plot holes or storytelling holes i guess but you know because visually he's looking at Aerith with the party fixing the ship just to show that okay she's not really there there but he's talking to Aerith right now speaking to Aerith, and she's like there there maybe maybe it's a stretch but that's just some crazy thing i just noticed while editing my video so we'll continue the video now that's another interesting thing of Aerith possibly contradictory. Because earlier in the game, Aerith is like, I'll worry about Sephiroth. You got to work on yourself. Like, I feel like if this was truly an Aerith that is aware of a lot, that she, unless it's a part of the plan where, according to Aerith, like Aerith needs Cloud to give the Black Materia to Sephiroth, maybe that's a part of her plan. If this, if this is Spirit Aerith, that could be the case where it's like, well, I know Cloud's gonna get, get messed up, but he kinda does need to deliver the Black Materia to Sephiroth. Cause he does need to appear in physical form for us to defeat him. And he's merging all the timelines into one so we can finally defeat him if he is, if he is resurrected in the Northern Crater. So I do feel that that is one thing, but it is also a little contradictory to what Aerith was saying before. Just a tad bit. But it does make sense that if this was Spirit Aerith, it's like, well, in order to defeat Sephiroth, you kind of do need to resurrect him and have him merge all the timeline. You kind of need to have him do that in order to truly defeat him. So it's not totally contradictory, but... The, the Genova theory still would play out, and this would make sense either way on that, because Aerith, the Genova messing with Cloud is really needing him to go and resurrect Sephiroth as well. Aerith, I will stop Sephiroth. Trust me. This is an interesting shot with the feet, the pause, and then the turnaround. It's sort of like a villain shot. Right? I don't know. It's, it's sort of like a shot you would do like, oh, I'm like a, like, a, it's sort of like shots in movies and stuff would be like, oh, he's going to go to Sephiroth. Yes. Yes. He's, he's, he's going with the plan kind of thing. 
That's uh, that, that's kind of kind of what it looks like. That's just another stretch. The pause and the turnaround. You promise? Now this is the this is the uh, stretch that people have pointed out that there's a glint in her eye that's kind of reddish. I mean, it's it's a little bit of a stretch. It's not exactly the type of red that. Cloud was seeing, looking at the black material. It's just a little, little something. I don't know if that's true or not. It would be cool if it was. Yes. Promise. You promise you'll go, go deliver that black material, Cloud? You promise? Promise? You got the banger song. It's such a beautiful shot, dude. Oh god, this shot is amazing. Oh, it's Eris Flowers. Goodbye. Goodbye. No promises. You promised? Yeah. No promises away. Damn. Crazy. Um, the only other thing that is... A... a again... All of these things that I'm saying in this ending is not... It's just every possible theory that I could possibly think of if this is to not be taken at face value is everything I'm saying. If anything is contradicted in the third game, perfectly okay. These are not concrete. The last thing I noticed, if this means anything, this is also a stretch is I feel like, it, and again, this is a, this is a you know, cutscene. A lot of animations and facial things can alter and look different and weird. Promise. I feel that her face is different in this shot. It looks just a little different. Her, she looks you a promise? little different in this shot. Like, her face looks a little different. Than it does in this shot. Just a little bit. It could be that she's directly facing more more light, so the shadows are doing different. But it just to add to the confusion is an intentional that she, her face does look a little different. Just a little bit. That's a really bonkers, bonkers take. That's the last thing I possibly noticed. Amazing cutscene, though. Goodbye. If you just look at this cutscene at face value, it's still amazing. It's very melancholic. It's either extremely melancholic or immensely messed up. At face value, sort of messed up with Cloud saying really weird things to the party. Um, very melancholic. Anyway, these are my thoughts on all of the bat bat crazy thoughts that I have for this ending whether any of it is true or not you know who knows but I just thought I'd give a video of all of the things I could possibly think of with this ending and just we'll have to see what happens with the third game this game is incredible probably one of the greatest RPGs ever made and I think they just nailed this game mostly and I think, I think we all just can't wait for the third game. All right. Thanks guys for watching dudes.